Ambassador, we move to the third video, actually the fourth one now. And uh, we have spoken, uh, you mentioned about uh, the George W. Bush. You spoke about uh, Clinton as president, India's uh, nuclear test, the nuclear deal. Now, in the context of all this, uh, is India really a counterbalance to China as far as uh, United States uh, is concerned? What are your views in that regard? Well, that's a very important question. My short answer is, uh, the question, is India considered a counterbalance to China? My uh, short answer would be, yes, but. Now, the yes is uh, much easier to answer. The but is a little more I look uh, complex. Yes. Little bit. So, let me start uh, with uh, Henry Kissinger. Not a very popular figure in India, but uh, his scholarship cannot be denied. And I think the best book that he has produced is called Diplomacy. That's perhaps one of his last books. One that? of his last books, which was published in 1994. And in that, he has said, as I mentioned uh, before, that uh, in his view, the United States was the strongest power on earth ever in the history of human civilization. So, the impressive power of the United States was emphasized. And then he qualified it, saying, uh, this is going to be affected by more countries coming up. And in his list of countries, he added, maybe India, 1994. But by 1994, the uh, think tanks in the United States were beginning to focus on China. And whether China was really going to be a friendly country or will turn otherwise. And so, uh, I take you forward to 2000, when George W. Bush became President of the United States. By coincidence, I also joined there as ambassador in the same year. And George W. Bush had a group of, uh, of uh, strategic thinkers around him, and they were his kind of think tank. It, they were very conservative, and they were identifying friends of the United States and enemies of the United States. Okay. That's how in one of his State of the Union speeches, he talks about the axis of evil. Now, the axis of evil uh, was uh, referring purely to countries which promoted terrorism. Iran, yes. uh, Iraq, and North Korea. Okay. This was the original axis of evil. Right. But in the back of his mind, George W. Bush and his colleagues, I think, were looking ahead and thinking of China. And the conservatives came to the conclusion that precautions have to be taken because we don't know what China is going to be like. So China was a factor. And I think in the mind of the president, President Bush, India was looming large as a counterbalance to China. Because when you open the map of Asia, uh, which is the country that is large enough to match China was India. Okay. So, uh, uh, this has further developed in recent years when a lot of scholars, particularly those thinking that China was going to be the next hegemon superpower which will replace the United States. The United States was, was uh, in decline. Its powers were going to be ineffective. Now, uh, recent history has proved that wrong. The United States is not declining. It is as strong as before. But in the last couple of years, the US has actually energized its allies, particularly NATO after Ukraine, okay. and has strengthened its alliance with uh, Japan and Australia and South Korea in, in, in the Indo-Pacific. And all that has happened, but still there was a gap. And India, according to the American president, had to be brought in as a partner at any cost. He was prepared to pay the price. 
that is how when the proposal was made, uh, two prime ministers of India, first Vajpayee and then Manmohan Singh grabbed the opportunity saying, okay, this is a historic occasion. Uh, the biggest power on earth was hostile to us and is now offering friendship. Should we take it or not? They said, yes, we will, but. So the but part of it was the subject of negotiations for nearly six years until we actually declared the nuclear deal and the strategic partnership. But I'm using the but in a different way in answer to your question. Because today, the bilateral relationship has grown so much that it has acquired a life of its own. So if you look at the spread of our relations with the United States, undoubtedly the most important uh, strategic partnership we have, the, uh, it gives you the impression that yes, China is still a large factor, but China is no longer the dominating factor. Okay. That there is a balance of interest and whether the China threat is there or not, the two countries will still be important partners. So there you have it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, in the context of what you just uh, spoke, what is uh, Prime Minister Modi's approach to US? Okay. Uh, again, a very interesting question, especially because of Mr. Modi and his background. Now, uh, Prime Minister Modi had uh, probably was not very enthusiastic about the US for personal reasons because he had been blacklisted by the US. He was refused entry to the United States, right? But he was the Prime Minister of India. So that's the personal reason part of it. The personal reason part of it. But as the Prime Minister and as the leader of India, he set it aside okay. and he set it aside and realized the importance of the U.S. partnership and put, put his entire energy into the partnership. Now, um, one, there is something remarkable of Mr. Modi, the ease with which he establishes a personal rapport with every head of state or head of government he meets. And you can illustrate this with regard to the United States. He has faced three presidents of the US, Obama, then Trump, and now Joe Biden. And they are different personalities with different dialogues. Quite right. But the common factor is Mr. Modi has established first name terms with all of all them. Three. And he has, uh, he has expanded the gains that India has from the United States despite the fact that there are three different presidents he has dealt with. And all of them also had a bit of an anti-India background before they became president. So he's been able to neutralize that. He, he's been able to neutralize that and, uh, and negotiate for India's interests with, uh, with his customary vigor. Uh, now, do you think that the three presidents that you named Obama, Trump, and uh, Joe Biden. Uh, is the graph in a positive manner for India is steadily rising or it has seen up and down the three administrations? Well, as, as I see it, we regard uh, Clinton as a man who changed the course of Indo-US relations after his uh, landmark visit in, in 20, 20 uh, sorry, uh, in 2000, right? After that, the graph has been going up. After we negotiated the uh, nuclear deal and the strategic partnership and the defense partnership, the graph has been going up and up and up. Now, uh, uh, Obama had a bit of history. Yes. He didn't know India, but he was a senator and an active senator. So when the uh, nuclear deal went for approval in the Congress, he uh, uh, filed two amendments, yes. which for us were killer amendments. If the amendments were passed, then the nuclear deal would go through. But he was persuaded to withdraw them 
and then the rest is history. Okay. George W. Bush didn't know anything about India. I mean, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, it haunted me through, throughout my stay in Washington. What is it that led him to say, I want India, because he had never been to India. I don't think he had thought about India. He was a local politician from Texas. I, my guess was that he had met enough bright Indians in Texas for him to think that this is a country that has a lot of value for, for the US. But it was his line and he was a man of strong beliefs. It was his belief that India should be brought into partnership. It was not an Indian initiative. And he uh, got strong support from his national security advisor, Condoleezza Rice, who later on became the Secretary of State in his second term and piloted the Indo-US nuclear deal. Without her assistance, perhaps, perhaps this deal, 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 yeah, because the American bureaucracy, right. as I mentioned last time, is formidable. And there was so much of uh, the, the remnants of prejudice against India from the Cold War years that uh, this would have been almost impossible. So, so yes. Modi's approach to US was uh, overcoming his, his past experience in the US, putting all his energy into it. And he pushed the boundaries in favor of India. Uh, it was he who in 2020 elevated it to the level of comprehensive global strategic partnership. Now imagine strategic partnership are exclusive agreements but they have different titles. This is the Bharat Ratna of strategic partnerships. Okay. You know, it is the most exclusive, the most extensive, the most comprehensive deal we have, which makes America the most uh, uh, important strategic partner for India. And this is a significant achievement. And I credit Mr. Modi for achieving this level of, of, uh, of bilateral relationship in so short a time. We can discuss, yes. we can discuss. Uh, I'll just like your short answer, very short answer. Is it something to, uh, as a diplomat, would you view it something that this is something like what we had with Soviet Union prior to 71 war? Yes, now, um, you know, I've often asked myself the question, were we actually non-aligned? I mean, this was a mantra. But were we not always closer to Moscow than Washington? Were we not always criticizing Washington but keeping quiet on Moscow? All that is there. Did we not sign a, a, a defense deal almost, a security deal in 1971? Strategic implications. All that is yes. true. All that is true and later on yes. they revised the name because it clashed with non-alignment. Yes. But with all that, I believe that we have achieved something even beyond what we have to the Soviet Union. We have gone beyond now. We have gone beyond because we never had a formal defense agreement with, with the Soviet Union. We have a formal one, which uh, uh, then External Affairs Minister Pranab Mukherjee yeah. negotiated with the US. He went on a visit and came back with a defense cooperation agreement for 10 years, which has been extended. So this is it. Then the uh, level of trade and economic relations, there is no comparison. There is no comparison. There is no comparison between what we had with the Soviet Union yes. and what we have with the United States. Right. And finally, people to people contacts. Yes. The test, test of partnership is, are your citizens against or for that country? And yes. our people have voted with their feet. No. They send their children to, for education. They visit the United States massively, so that Americans come to India. This is a different dimension. 